Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my presentation on ancient Egypt. I'm going to take you on a journey, a journey back in time, to visit the land of ancient Egypt, which has a unique fascination for most Europeans, and indeed, most people in the world. I imagine that many of you have been to ancient Egypt, or have seen a program, or know something about this fascinating land. Well, we're going to start our journey by asking the question, how do we know so much about ancient Egypt, and why was it lost for a long time? Let's begin by asking some basic questions about why Egypt is so fascinating. It is a, a, a land of the god kings, the pharaohs. It's uh, well known for its pyramids, its mummies, and of course the invention of writing. It certainly is a very old civilization, at least 5,000 years old. It's the world's first nation state with a politi political setup and more importantly it's where we find the first permanent stone architecture. It's also a land that has a fascination for death. It's the only civilization that's written guidebooks to what happens to you in the afterlife. It really is a unique civilization. So why was ancient Egypt lost? Here's our picture of the Sphinx by David Roberts in 1839, with some tourists nearby, and you can see it's covered in sand. We're going to peel back these layers of sand and see how we rediscovered ancient Egypt. But first of all, we must go to the end of the long Egyptian classical history. Here's a picture of what we think it was like at the end of the period in the Roman period, when life was still going on, there were still people living in temples and seen this reconstruction that still looked fantastic in their size and grandeur and colour. We also know that Egypt was a place where tourists came to from all over the Roman Empire. And we know that because the top picture you see here shows a mosaic in Italy uh, put together by a very rich tourist to show all the things he saw, just like you would take photographs when you went along the Nile. We also know that uh, 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 Egypt in the late period was inhabited by some Roman legions to protect it from marauding barbarians outside the borders. And believe it or not, this picture shows the great temple at Luxor surrounded by a large Roman fort. However, in the 7th century all this changed drastically because the light of our knowledge of ancient Egypt disappeared. The country was overrun by the Arab peoples and for a long time Egypt was closed. However, slowly the Europeans gained entry. Often they had to go disguised as Arabs to get into the country and they were amazed at what they actually found. What you can see here is the pyramids, a very early picture of 1672, surrounded by sand. You can also see the European fascination for mummies. If you look at the very bottom picture here, you can see a mummy being uncovered and it's an interesting point that a ground down mummy was very good as a physic to help with your health. In fact, the Arabic word for mummy comes from the word bitumen, which was painted all over these mummies. And these were taken by their thousands, ground down and eaten and drunk by Europeans. A strange way to find out how mummies actually were found. Now, it's not until the 18th century that we have a, a sudden change in our knowledge of ancient Egypt. Now, uh, the empires of Britain and France were fighting each other, and Napoleon decided to visit Egypt. You can see him here, look, down here, look, right, giving the sword, the command of Alexander about 1790. He didn't just bring his army, he brought with him a whole array of scholars who went around the country drawing, painting, taking notes of all these wonderful antiquities which were lying around very much uncared for. And you can see here on the bottom picture there is surveying a great big hand of a colossal statue of some unknown pharaoh. Up here they, they've stopped 
right, and Sayin. And here, look, it's the bottom of a, of a temple pillar, and they're looking at these strange writings, wondering, as they all did in Europe, what did they actually say? What was the key to understanding? How could we ever discover what was actually written by the ancient Egyptians themselves? Napoleon was also fascinated by a mummy. And here you can see him being shown a really nice mummy of a, of a royal look. He's got his arms crossed, so he certainly is a member of the royal family of ancient Egypt. And there's Napoleon, look, paying homage to this long-lost god king of ancient Egypt. Now, the pyramids have always been there. You can't really disguise them. True, they were surrounded by sand. You can see the sand piling up. And long ago, um, Arabs had blasted their way in with gunpowder, trying to find untold riches. But alas, they found very little inside the pyramids. But they were a great fascination to most Europeans. And if you paid your money, you could hire a torchbearer, you could be taken inside and climb up the great galleries. You can see going up here to view the empty room where the pharaoh once laid in great splendour. Now it's also at this time that the British and the French will begin to collect. And these collections form the basis of the British Museum right, and the Louvre Museum in Paris. And one very early collector was Henry Salt, who was the cons consort in Egypt from 1816, when he died in 1827. And he arranged for a rather strange man called Giovanni Belzoni. You can see him here, look, dressed as an Arab. And here's his actual passport to come into the country, to come in and to go around and collect wonderful collections of antiquities, most of, most of which are now in the British Museum. Thank mm -hmm. you.